What's up everybody, Greg here with lens to go and Lens Rentals and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about something I don't normally cover on this channel and that's talking about a camcorder. This is the Panasonic CX350 4K camcorder and the reason I wanna talk about this one specifically is that it has something installed in it called NDI which stands for Network Device Interface, and it's really gonna change the workflow for live event and multi-camera shoots. But before we get into that, I wanna talk about some of the features that this camera has. Now, it is a fixed lens camcorder, which means you can't swap the lenses out to get different focal lengths, but you're not really gonna to need to be able to do that with this camera because it has such a large zoom range, going from 8.8 .8 millimeters all the way up to 176 millimeters on its one inch sensor which roughly gets you a 24 to 490 millimeter focal range, Super 35 equivalent. With that, you also have a variable aperture going from 2.8 to 4.5, which is pretty standard for the camcorders in this range. Another nice feature for the optics is that you have a five axis in-body stabilization, so you can get some really smooth footage even when you're handheld. Now going on to the body of this camera, you have all of your professional inputs. So you have two XLR inputs, you have your HD SDI, your HDMI, as well as two SD card slots. You have all of your tools, so your waveform, zebras, you have your image stabilization like I mentioned. There's also three different levels of internal ND which you can turn on by a flip of a switch. So it's super nice to be able to shoot outdoors. And basically everything you'd expect from a camcorder like this from Panasonic or from Canon or Sony, it has all of the features that you're gonna need. Going into the camera and talking about some of the codecs and resolutions and shooting options, you can do 4K UHD up to 60p, and that's 422 10-bit internally using the HEVC codec. You also have the All-I codec, which is the 400 megabits per second codec that's found in the GH5S as well as the EVA1. But this you can only record up to 10-bit at 25 frames a second. If you are recording in that all i 400 megabits per second codec, you will need to have the faster V90 SD cards to allow for that sort of recording. And then lastly, this camera has some really nice network connectivity options, allowing you to turn on Wi-Fi and then control the camera from a phone or a tablet using an app, as well as being able to live stream directly to YouTube or Facebook or any other live streaming platform. And that leads into what I really wanna talk about with this camera, and that's the NDI capabilities. Now this NDI is kind of a new thing and it's an emerging technology for cameras like this. So you might have not heard about it yet, but I wanna give you a quick little breakdown of how it works and how it's gonna make your life so much easier for multi-camera and live streaming shoots. So currently how most people deal with transferring video signal from a camera like this is they either go over the HD SDI or the HDMI out or using wireless transmitters like Teradex to get that feed sent wirelessly to a switcher or computer or something like that. But all of those methods have a lot of limitations. For one, you need to have a physical cable or a wireless transmitter attached to every single one of the sources that you want this signal sent to. So if you want that signal to go out to five different places, you're gonna have to go SDI out of your camera into that first unit, then onto the next one, then onto the next one, and onto the next one. Now say you're doing that with multiple cameras going through all of those different inputs, it can start to get pretty crazy and you have a ton of cable running all around. You also have to worry about length limitations with SDI and running it that far. Standard SDI can go up to about 100 meters or around 300 feet. And if you're doing this over HDMI, it's only about 50 feet or about 15 meters. On the other side is your monitor, your switcher, or your computer, or wherever you're sending this signal to. And the limitations there are with inputs. Now say you have a switcher that only has four inputs and you need five cameras. Well, you're only gonna be able to use four different cameras. You can't use all five that you need to. And this is where NDI comes in using ethernet cable over a local area network and it's surprisingly easy to use. With NDI, you're no longer limited to certain cable limitations. You can easily get over a thousand feet of run if you need to. You also get some camera control for pan, tilt, and zoom cameras. And lastly, there's no more limitations on how many import sources you can have into your switcher. So you could have 20, 30, or more cameras if you wanted to. There's two ways to use NDI. The first one is creating its own local network. And this is gonna work by taking an ethernet out of your camera, plugging it into a network switch, and then plugging your computer, your switcher, or whatever you're using into that network switch as well. And now you're gonna be able to see that source signal on your switcher. Now the cool thing here is you can add as many cameras as you want, as many ports as you have on your network switch, and you can also add as many switchers as you want and still have access to all of the different source inputs. All you have to do is make sure that your camera is set up to send out NDI, and then on your computer, your live stream, or your switcher side, you make sure that that's NDI capable as well. The second way is to patch into an existing network, like in a building which already has all of this ethernet infrastructure built in. So what you're gonna do here is plug in ethernet into the back of your camera, 
Then you're gonna plug that into an ethernet port on the wall. And then as long as all of your other systems, your switchers, your live streams are also hooked into that same network, then these cameras are gonna come up and you're gonna be able to use them as source inputs. And then just like before, you can plug in as many cameras and as many monitoring switchers, recording monitoring options as you want, hooked into an ethernet as long as it's all on that same network. And this is gonna be a total game changer for live event and multi-camera productions, making the process just so much easier. Now, this all sounds pretty great and like there's really no downside to this, but there are a couple limitations of this new ethernet NDI. Currently using the NDI, you can only get up to full HD, which is 1920 by 1080, and up to 60 frames a second. It also only has a maximum bit depth of 422. So in the future, I hope this is updated to allow for 4K video transfer over the ethernet cables, because we know those have the bandwidth of up to a gigabit per second. So that's everything that I wanted to cover about the Panasonic CX350, as well as the NDI, and sort of a little introduction to what NDI is and where it's going in the future. If you have any questions about it or you want to hear a video a little more in detail specifically on NDI, make sure to let me know in the comments down below. And if you have any questions about this camera or you want to try it out for yourself, make sure to check out the links in the description and I'll see you in the next one.